हेलो गाइस टुडेज टॉपिक इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप सो द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप एंड ट्रांसमिशन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ बेसिक स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप एंड ट्रांसमिशन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप सो वी विल सी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप इज कॉल्ड एस सी एम एंड ट्रांसमिशन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप In short, is called TEM. So the first basic difference between these two types of electron used. So in this one, we use scattered or scanning electrons. Scanning electrons. In case of TEM, we use transmitted. electrons the second basic difference is on the basis of voltages in case of sem we use the voltage from 1 to 30 kilo electron volt and case of tm we use higher voltage value that is 60 to 300 kilo electron volt third basic difference is resolution so in case of sem 10 to 20 nanometer is the best possible resolution and in case of tem this resolution goes to 1 to 3 angstrom fourth basic difference for magnification so in case of sem we can go up to 1000 kx and case of tm we can go up to Fifty lakhs. The fifth basic difference is on the basis of depth of field. So SEM has a good depth of field, and uh, TEM is not having a very good depth of field. That is poor depth of field in, in comparison to SEM. and one more difference based on the specimen size so in case of sem we can use any size not to be very specific in case of sem so we can say any size like uh, uh, 5 mm cube or greater than that but in case of tm we have a very specific size the sample thickness should be less than 100 micron and the disk should be of size 3 mm this should be thickness so this one is for mechanically possible that polishing but to electron to get transmitted the thickness should be less than 150 nanometer so this can only be achieved by twin jet polishing so this twin jet polishing is basically for metallic sample and uh, this thickness we can also achieved by other processes like iron milling or fib there are other methods also but this is basically for metallic samples now we will see the schematics of scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope 
so uh, this is the schematic of scanning electron microscope this image is taken from geol so the source image source is this so this is the uh, link which is given here so for more details you can go through this link so in this sem this is the electron source so here we can use the thermionic there are two types of electron source that uh, thermionic and field emission so this is a thermionic kind of source so here in case of thermionic we can use tungsten and lab6 as a electron gun source and uh, there are some coils we, here we use so these are the coils which is for uh, focusing of the electron beam on the sample and uh, these and there are some detectors we use for uh, detecting the signals like this one so this is the SE detector this is the BSE detector this is the WDS detector and this is the EDS so EDS and WDS basically for composition and uh, SE detector for uh, factography and this is the detector for jet contrast imaging and this is the specimen where we put the specimen so this is the imaging from SEM at a different different scales like 100x, 1000, 10,000 and 1 lakh x so this is the factography kind of uh, images from SEM and these are the analysis so x-ray mapping we can also do by SEM composition analysis by EDS or WDS and ABSD mapping for the grain orientation and cathode luminescence for the semiconductor materials we can do this is the electron probe and sample interaction and this is the uh, SEM volume interaction in which different different signals we get now we will see the schematic of transmission electron microscope so this is also kind of electron microscope where the electrons are transmitted so the transmitted electron uh, forms the images so here we also use the electron source like previously we saw and uh, there are also some condenser lenses and uh, aperture and coils and uh, here this is actually detector also here and okay so there is a one big difference between the SEM and TEM in case of uh, SEM we put the sample at the uh, last like uh, we have seen here this is the sample position but in case of TM we put the sample between the objective lenses so uh, here they saw only single objective lens because the uh, basically there are one more objective lens here and this is a second objective lens so in between the sample is inserted so this is the sample position in case of TM this is the objective aperture forming the images and uh, this is the selected area aperture for very specific area we want to analyze this is the projector lens for uh, final magnification and these are the detectors bright field this annular dark field detector this is the head of this is the high angle annular dark field detector this is the viewing screen and this is the CCD camera photographic plates for forming the images and uh, this is the setup for the eels electron energy loss spectroscopy Uh, so the image source for this TM is uh, this is the link so for more details you can go through this paper and uh, where you can find the SEM and TM in detail and this is the author name B. Jainson okay now we will see what is the application of this SEM and TM and what kind of uh, uh, things we can find out so in case of TM there are basically two types of images bright field and dark field so bright field images will form when the transmitted electrons are allowed like this is the spots we will get for a single crystal because this is the uh, regular arranged periodic pattern that's why this is the single crystal pattern we got in case of TEM so this is the transmitted spot if we will put the objective aperture to not to allow these spots all these deficit spots then we will get the bright field this one 
for the for case of dark field diffracted spots diffracted spots will be considered that means diffracted electrons are allowed to form the image so in case of df the objective aperture the objective aperture will not allow this transmitted electrons so this will be covered and all these diffracted spots will allow to make the dark field image so this bright field and dark field these are the imaging modes so how we can get this diffraction pattern in which the transmitted spot is the brightest one that is the central spot and these are the kind of spots which are called diffracted spots so this diffraction pattern will form when intermediate lens lens is focused on the back focal plane of the objective lens objective lens so this is for diffraction pattern condition for diffraction pattern and condition for imaging is when the intermediate lens intermediate lens is focused on image plane of the objective lens so this is the fundamental difference between diffraction pattern and imaging so in case of the in case of diffraction pattern intermediate lens is focused on the back focal plane of the objective lens and in case of imaging image plane of the objective lens now we will see the application point of view for scm and tm in case of scm if we are receiving this se secondary electron that is for fractography bsc back scattered electron that's for z contrast imaging and eds that is basically dependent on composition analysis this is based on the principle of characteristic x ray and uh, cathode luminescence is also one more feature which is basically for semiconductor material in case of tm generally we use the tm for precipitates precipitates of nanometer size which cannot be identified in xrd and scm so if we want to know the crystal structure of this kind of precipitates so we need diffraction pattern of this precipitate and from where we can find out the crystal structure of this kind of precipitates and second dislocation imaging of dislocation and identifying the dislocation is the uh, main use of this tm and stacking fault visualization and imaging stacking faults visualization and imaging these are the three basic uh, need of tm with more details in case of uh, SEM and TM we will come up with the separate videos so please follow watch share subscribe thank you very much